And the first U.S. Marines have arrived in Australia as America boosts its military presence in the Asia-Pacific region. More than 2,000 personnel will be deployed here over the next few years and uh, adds to America's military footprint in such countries as the Philippines and Singapore, all in China's backyard. Well, for more on the story, I'm joined by James Corbett, editor of the Corbett Report, an independent news website based in Japan. James, thanks for being with us once again. Uh, um, Australia's defense minister insists there are no U.S. military bases in the country and they're not in the plan. So what is the cooperation about here? Well, as I understand it, that wasn't exactly what was said by uh, Defense Minister Smith. I think the uh, the phrase that was used was that it was a long-term prospect for the the uh, giving of the Cocos Islands for an airstrip for unmanned aerial vehicles uh, by the for, by the use of the U.S. But uh, but certainly, I think one has to take what the Defense Minister is saying there with with a certain grain of salt because there's no doubt whatsoever that the that the uh, the nexus of of the uh, the Asia Pacific region in terms of a military stri strategic uh, arming and staging base for the U.S. is going to be Australia in the future. I think it's really just the uh, question of what uh, what terms that arrives at and how it's introduced to the public. So um, so uh, I think they're probably not un unveiling all the plans right from the get-go, but uh, but I think the idea that the U.S. is going to be staging a much greater military presence in Australia is pretty much taken for granted at this point. Right, and even if you don't call them military bases, they're still going to be hubs in the region and with the U.S. surrounding China. I mean, how long is Beijing going to sit back and watch this build up? Well, to a certain extent, they already aren't. Uh, they're certainly becoming more aggressive in the South China Sea, where, of course, they, they claim almost the entirety of the South China Sea as their own territory and have been more aggressive in recent years in, in enforcing that um, through their navy and making more uh, more overt uh, threats, I think, to, to other players in the region. So I think that's why the uh, the Cocos Islands are going to be extremely important, a territory, an Australian territory um, in the Indian Ocean that's going to be a, a staging base for U.S. unmanned aerial vehicles. And and that's, uh, that's particularly important because that relates to the air-sea battle plan that the U.S. Uh, uh, unveiled last year as the Pentagon's full-spectrum dominance idea for the South China Sea in that area, obviously, uh, without being specifically spoken, but obviously the, the assumption is that, that those uh, that weaponry and the, those battle plans will be directed at China, the obvious dominant uh, power player in the region that, that they're struggling against at this point. So certainly I think China has to understand and does understand, I'm sure, that, uh, that this is very much aimed at them. Uh, do you think that we'll see any kind of escalation? Uh, certainly, I, I think that uh, the, that's the only predictable outcome from this type of move. I mean, the, the staging of more more troops in the area can only lead to to the greater chance for for a confrontation, if nothing else. And uh, and again, that's a perfectly predictable result of this. And uh, and I think we're seeing the now right now the deliberate locating of of a a new nexus, as it were, a new a new battlefront for for the U.S. forces in the Asia Pacific region. And I think we've seen that increasingly reflected in the diplomatic rhetoric with uh, Secretary of State Clinton last year, of course, uh, saying that the Asia-Pacific was going to be the, uh, the locus for, for the, uh, change and growth in, in the world, the, the nexus of the, the world economy in the 21st century. So, so certainly we are seeing a lot of things uh, turning to this region, and, uh, and Australia is going to be, play an important part of that in being a key American ally. Uh, just briefly, James, uh, some of the Asia-Pacific nations seem quite happy to receive uh, a bigger U.S. military presence in the region. Do they fully understand what they're getting into here? Well, that's a, that's a good question, and I think that it's a case of real politic, and I think that there are certain um, governments that, that believe that they can they can benefit from this, and they're they're likely to side with whoever is going to be the the whoever whoever they perceive to be is going to be the eventual winner in this type of confrontation. So, obviously, at this stage, America has a clear superiority when it comes to conventional uh, naval uh, assets, for example, let alone cyber weapons and all of the other tools of warfare that are being deployed, unmanned aerial vehicles. So, I think the U.S is going to be uh, obviously the dominant player here and uh, and a lot of governments will will uh, shake hands with the devil as it were uh, it, it, even if they don't agree with all of the US policies they'll certainly go along with uh, with it in order to get certain kickbacks on the in the diplomatic uh, scene all right James Corbett editor of the Corbett report independent news website based in Japan thanks a lot for your analysis